Hello, hello, and welcome to uh, Dark Shed Live. It's Sunday, the seventeenth of May, uh, episode fifteen. Now I think, yes. Hope you're all doing well uh, out there. Uh, right. So last Thursday, I did a little extra bonus stream after my Thursday morning tea break, and broadcast about two hours of live darkroom printing. Uh, which is pretty exciting stuff, I'm sure. Um, and I was working on a print from a 4x5 uh, still life negative, uh, and I'll carry on working on that this week. Um, I got the two prints from it here, which are now dried. Don't know why you can see that on this camera. I tried it on a gloss paper and a matte paper, um, and I thought I was going to prefer the gloss paper actually while I was doing it, but now they've dried down i really like the matte one but it still needs improvement so i'm going to work on that next week um other good news is i finally managed to resolve my uh, chemical printing problems uh making the special the developer for the solography uh, not solarization <laughs> uh, prints um which i've managed to mix up this morning and i've done a test strip and it all seems to be working well so i might stream that later um, today if I get a chance to, to get back in the dark room. Um, also last week I forgot to mention um, something that was really cool that was involved in was a few printers from around the world. It was Dan in Hong Kong and Thomas in Berlin. We all connected via Skype and streamed it out. Well we didn't stream it live but we streamed it and recorded it um, and after a few technical problems uh, we actually managed to record like two hours of, of printing. I didn't do any printing. I just kind of watched those guys do some. Um, and Dan even used a 35, like it's a $5 enlarger that he'd made using a 35 mil camera with an LED light on top, um, exposing through the natives and through the lens that he was shot with and made some prints in that. And it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, so yeah, check that out. That's on my YouTube stream, uh, stream YouTube channel now. Um, and we're hoping to do more of those. So um, yeah, if you'd like to join us, please get in touch. Just see who's uh, who's coming to the chat. Alex, <laughs> Alex is here. Uh, Mark, afternoon, Mark and Tara. Great to see you both. Thank you for joining. Um, so talking of which, on today's show, uh, I've got a special guest joining me, who's uh, actually going to show us his dark room, and we're going to talk about some prints. Um, and technology permitting, hopefully we can all say hello to another one second. <laughs> Al, Al Davenport. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Excellent. Hopefully, you can hear me. I can hear you. Brilliant, and hopefully, everyone at home can hear you as well. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Literally. As I'm sure you're aware, Al, I've had a few technical issues with these strings, and this is the first time I've kind of hooked somebody in via Skype, so we'll keep our fingers crossed that it all works. How are you doing today? Yeah, yeah, good, yeah, good. Yeah, um, right. It's a lovely day. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Always yeah, the way, isn't it, when you're in the dark? Mind you, your dark room doesn't look very dark at the moment. No, no, it's, um, it's actually a bedroom that uh, I can convert into a dark room really easily. So behind me, there's a board that actually goes up into the window um, and blocks out the light. I then have some little hooks. Uh, you can't actually see them, but where my finger is, like across the top of the, um, just underneath the ceiling. And then I have a, you'll see it in a minute, but I have some uh, curtain, blackout curtains that then go over that as well. Um, so are you, are you constantly kind of taking your... Um your setup down and using um, it as a bedroom as well so yes and no so ideally i would like to leave it up but uh <laughs> for a happy home life i have to take it down um uh, fairly often so i normally yeah. leave them up for about a week at a time and then okay. i'll print for that week and then i will bring it uh, take it down and then it's it's actually not that that much of an effort to yeah. to put back up it takes about five minutes so it's not too bad um, oh, that's, oh yeah that's that's not too much of a kind of yeah. step to go through is it to get going no it actually, fact, do, does it mean that when you do work you're kind of more concentrated because you know right i've got a set time to do this and, and be in this space yeah pretty much so when i when i'm printing at the moment i i know roughly what i'm going to print or I, i'll work on a particular project and then i will try and get 
uh, as many of the different negatives printed from that series as I can. Um, even if they're not going to be the final ones, I just want to see what they look like and and uh, mm-hmm. get something to then work on later on. So a couple of the ones that we'll talk about later, have, they're, they're probably the third or fourth iteration of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, to get something that I actually liked. And so in the downtime, when you haven't got your dark room set up, does that help you, do you think, have kind of mental space, like looking at the images and thinking about them so you know what you're doing when you're going back into the dark room to a large extent yeah um so sometimes when i'm in my downtime i'm not even thinking about the images at all um yeah. <laughs> but then when i start to get an itch then i'm like oh no i have to then start doing something and so and that's normally about a week a week and a half before i then start printing again and it, within that week and a half i'm then starting to analyze uh, other images that i've got um some of the ones i've actually printed or just looking at negatives and i just i mean i don't have a very good filing system um <laughs> you'll see in a second and so i'll just i'll, I'll take a a negative sleeve hold it up to the light and then go i really think i want to look at this one and it'll be one that i've not even thought about before mm-hmm. um and it actually that it does help actually to distance myself from the time that i took the image and i yeah. find those are the ones that I then like the best when they're printed, not necessarily the one that I thought I would like when I took the image. Yeah, I, I experienced the same sort of thing. I think I think that's quite common actually, because if you kind of rush into it, you can you can be fooled by what's yeah. what's good and what's not. Because you're like, oh yeah, this one's great, it's all shiny, everything's perfect, it's all brilliant, this is the one. And then a couple of weeks later you're just like, actually this one's got more depth to it, I'm drawn to it more. And, those sort of elements so do you want to give us a little tour of your dark room yeah. then? um so i'm gonna put those i'm gonna you're on a laptop so i'm gonna take you around the uh the room in the laptop so hopefully uh, yeah, see you. <laughs> but so this is let's move that so can you uh can you see that yep perfect cool so uh this is where most of the printing happens i have uh two enlargers i have the color of lpl c7700 and i mm-hmm. have the uh durst uh, M670. So this Durst one was my first enlarger. I love that thing. Um, and it is, it's a condensing enlarger. It has, it's every flaw that you have in your negative, you will see on your print. <laughs> I've really? never used a condenser enlarger, but I've, I've read that about them, that basically yeah. everything has to be perfect for them. But it does, the flip side is, it means you get really sharp prints from them. So the prints that you'll see later are the ones that you can even see, the ones that you can see sort of flaws with the negative itself and you'll see like there's one that annoys me so much i love the image but it annoys me so much it's on, on on the lady's face you can actually see where there are scratches or something on the negative and yeah. on this larger it shows up on this one not so much oh, um, that's but i haven't properly printed on this one um but yeah and so i think uh the other weird thing is, so this one can do medium format, and I got I, yeah. both of these. I, I bought this one uh, f- three years ago when I first moved back to the UK. Um, I got it for 50 quid off of um, eBay. Uh, I was mm-hmm. getting into at the time, and um, yeah, I had to go down to London to pick it up, but the lady who gave it to me wanted to, or, or I mean, essentially gave it to me for such a cheap price, um, <laughs> wanted to make sure that somebody who bought it would use it and would love it as much as she did. Um, and I, yeah, you know, I've been printing on this one for a couple of years, and most of the images came off of this enlarger. Um, I then joined the camera club. Um, I mean, I live in Cambridge at the moment. I joined the Cambridge camera club, and a nice gentleman there was getting rid of his darkroom equipment, and uh, put a post on the website. And I said I'd be interested if it was going, and um, and he, he just gave it to me for free, along with uh, uh-huh. hundreds of trays, a, um, a heap of extra. Um, uh, developing tanks and just I mean he, he even gave this really awesome rudimentary washing bucket that he made rather than using the Ilford uh, tray there's this, this great little thing yeah. that he you know he's like 80 70 years old I think and he just he'd made this uh, thing that you can just plug into your into your shower um, and just works really well uh, oh, so, fantastic what a great wow that very kind of him as well <laughs> it, uh, massively kind unfortunately this happened just after christmas i think and i got really busy with a new job so i haven't been down i hadn't been down quite as much and then covid uh hit so i haven't been i've, I've made him a print which actually oh, is my favorite God. print ever i'll bring it here <laughs> um which there this is also on the um, also one of the images you'll see but uh, i've made him this print 
Oh, which fantastic. I want to give to him as a gift, but obviously being in the vulnerable group, I don't want to... Um, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, you know, interact at the moment. So uh, I'm holding on to that until I until I see him. Um, so if I move round, I, basically the rest of the dark room is my shelf. <laughs> with, <laughs> Excellent. Um, I have all my uh, books for inspiration and uh, just in general photography-based books on this shelf. Uh, my general rubbish shelf that I have to deal with at some point, but that's future. <laughs> nah, never. Just leave it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on to like also boxes of mostly useful stuff, um, but also needs to kind of get sorted. Um, uh, up near the top, you have like the cam- uh, current cameras I'm using. Um, so brownie. Um, digital cameras, my Canon FTB, um, and then a, uh, that was actually my grandfather's that was given to me, which uh, so is really special for me. Um, weirdly, a, a Miller Cinecam, which does actually have some film in it, um, but I've never found, I've never really found time to use it properly. So I'll, mm-hmm. uh, I think, uh, and also uh, I'll point out, I don't think he's going to be watching at the moment, but um, all of my empty rolls of 120, um, uh, backing paper that I promised to give to Sandeep when he uh, when when I next see him. So uh, right. he's got, what does he want them for? I, I have no idea. Oh, right. got, <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll give them to him when I next see him. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and then my sort of wet side of things. So at the moment, you can see a table with uh, where I've, I've got my iPad so I can watch the stream. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm using that light stand to light me so you guys can see. Um, but this table set up here. Um, if I move this out of the way, there's a like a painter's painter's sheet that I pull out so that I can protect yeah. the car. And then I just set up my trays. Um, so these are these hold the up to the twelve and a half, uh, twelve by nine and a half, which is what I normally yeah. print. On. Okay. Um, and then I set them up with developer stop, fix, and then a holding tray before I move into the bathroom, which is. Oh, there we go. Sorry, is people feeling sick. If I move into the bathroom, which is just behind the door at the back, and that's, oh, that's good. Yeah. Final watching. Um, but yeah, other than that, that is pretty much my tiny little dark room. Well, it's perfect, oh, isn't it? Is it you don't, just you don't really so, need anything else. It's uh... no. So these these um, uh, blackout curtains I got from uh, like B and M, one of those really cheap stores, and yeah. just. Uh, I those 3M hooks, I have them all around the room, and then I just put three or four of those curtains around, and mm-hmm. it, like, it makes it light tight enough to be able to do work without fogging anything. So, do yeah. you, so a couple of questions related to that. Do you find that your um, you mainly print at night because of any light leak around those curtains? So I started to, and then. Oh, it would have been about a month ago. I had a real itch to want to do some printing, and I tend to do a lot of printing when my wife is out doing something else. Mm-hmm. And so, actually, maybe it was just before the lockdown. She had gone out, and during the day, I really wanted to do something. Yeah. And actually, I found that the light is subdued enough to not fog what I'm doing. Um, so, actually, I can print during the day um, mm-hmm. if I if I choose to. But if it's a really nice day, I kind of don't really want to be in the dark. No, so, it's, it's difficult. I, I find if I get, if I'm in the right frame of mind and I just leg it into the shed and don't think about what's going on outside, once I'm in here, I can kind of switch off to, oh, I'm missing a gorgeous day. But if I'm like constantly up and down yeah, between the house and here, every time I come back in, I'm just like, oh, I don't really want to be in here today. It's not. Yeah. And <laughs> this, especially this if it's a hot day as well and you just feel the warmth coming in and then you're just like, why yeah. am I here? But otherwise, you're right. If you just get into it, it's it's not so bad, but yeah. um, yeah. I tend to. So have you my... have you done a fogging test when like at midday yes. to see, and yep. you're not getting any signs on your paper or anything? No. So I get well. So my fogging test, um, I used both uh, a sheet of uh, for some reason a sheet of fiber paper and a sheet of RC from. I mostly use um, Ilford's Modi Grade Four at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and I literally, uh, I did it at the same time that I got a new, I put a new bulb into my uh, safe lamp. So I have two safe lamps, one literally just behind me and then one over the Kodak bum, uh, Beehive one. Um, yeah. And I changed the bulbs in them uh, to, to slightly more powerful ones because I was thinking of doing some filming and uh, wanted to see it. So I did a test that happened to just be during the middle of the day. 
yeah. and uh, I I saw uh, just a, the classic um, put an object on your paper, uh, put a sheet over the other side so that you only expose for um, uh, for one, and then you can fix the other fix the other half. And I saw no difference. Yeah. So oh, brilliant. So yeah, I think like there is a common misconception that you need a perfectly light type room, and you've proved here that like by the looks of it. To me, you've got a lot of light potential streaming in oh, through yeah. that window behind you. But yeah. and the only way to completely black that out would be to put a, a proper like seal around the edge of it. Now yeah. you're just doing it with some curtains and it's absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah. Now I'm sure if you left a piece of paper out for an hour, you might oh, find I'm... some fogging. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it would. Um I think I left it out for ten minutes was my maximum time period and I didn't see any difference, but yeah. Um, like if I left it out for much longer, maybe I would, but I don't. I'm fairly careful with my paper in the boxes and in the in the plastic bag as well. So they're never out for more than the time it takes to expose, plus a little yeah. bit extra of moving backwards and forwards. In fact, I don't even leave my paper in the plastic bag on the side. I um, I put every every time I take it out the box, I take it out the bag. I then put the bag. I then wrap the bag back up. I put it back in the yeah. box. Um, yeah, I, so. I think that's good practice. I, I do like I've, I'm just under safe like a lot of the time in here, but I do try to kind of even open the bag away from safe light, take the yeah. paper out, then the, that paper goes on the side, and everything immediately goes back in because if somebody comes in through the door, <laughs> you know, in that time, then at least I haven't lost the whole box. I've just lost that one piece of paper. So I think that's that's good practice no matter what your environment really. I learned um, that the whole because I did accidentally um so I, I like to flick the light on between after I've got it in the fix just to have a quick quick look because obviously they look different under red light as they do under mm -hmm. light so I um accidentally left the box open with the bag not even folded over and luckily I'm fairly safe but you can see right at the very tip of all the paper <laughs> this black on uh, for 50 sheets and 50 sheets oh. is not cheap <laughs> I, I did the same with um it was five by seven but the whole box i'd left open and it was when i was working in my garage and the postman came and i'd forgotten i'd left the box open i turned the lights on went to get the, the parcel came back in i was like no and it was just along all the edges so now that's just like test strip paper yeah. but yeah it's, it's a huge waste it's a huge yeah, it waste i'm just checking the uh messages that come in from got one from chris saying same as when you were doing the camera obscura john that was not exactly light type but still good so chris um joined me in uh, I, I did this huge camera obscura thing in a place in Coventry. and i had to go in black out all the windows let some light in through a lens and was capturing it on um photosensitive paper but it wasn't light type at all there's loads comes through the door at the top of the windows and everything now I was a bit concerned about it because the the time it took to get the paper, it's like huge, huge rolls of paper. You're ro taking it out of these big bags, rolling it out, taping it up, and then going through the process. I was a bit concerned, but actually the end results, I Did didn't you? really notice anything. So yeah, I think it, it goes to show that photo sensitive paper isn't as sensitive as you think it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't ever do this with, um, I wouldn't use this for taking out, film for example for uh, and i mean oh, unless no. it's sensitive to red light um yeah. so it's funny i work in a science lab and i managed to acquire some uh, expired x-ray film so i do use oh, that nice. yeah um yeah. at times and um and that well, you can you can you can have under red light um and that works perfectly fine um in this situation as well so it's not so even the light um coming from the, yeah any of the cracks don't seem to be affecting the x-ray film so much but i haven't done extensive testing with that to really be uh, super confident on that <laughs> yeah I, but I, guess... I was wondering about that the other day actually because like there were loads of medical industries that used to use um x-rays didn't they like dentists and i don't know like for all x-rays like bones and stuff like that do you know if they those they still use that analog system I so from from an from using actual X-rays, I don't actually know. Um, I know that from a science perspective. So we have a. It's a. Uh, I won't go into the detail of it, but it's a particular um, experiment called a Western blot that lots of us mm -hmm. use all the time. Um, 
And the old fashioned way is that you effectively are looking for a particular protein and you uh, the, the way you record it or used to record it was by having a very specific light band. So it would. So the reaction that you would do would cause a, a, lum, a, a luminescence that you could then put a sheet of film over the top and the, the, where that luminescence was against a, a marker. So of different sizes, you could then tell mm -hmm. if your protein was there or not. Okay. Now what yeah. they, do, they record that using, or I personally still love film. It's I still think it's more sensitive than the camera sensors that they have, or at least the noise to signal ratio for very weak signals right. is much yeah. better. Um, but now what they do, there's lots of companies that will you can analyze that using a, a top down camera, and they they do use digital oh. CCDs and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would gather that's a very similar concept, probably with X rays. Um, the detectors maybe I maybe much better in that aspect but i yeah, yeah from, from a me more medical side i don't know but i do know that fuji i think were at one point were talking about getting rid of some of the x-ray film um or that there was rumors i don't as i said this is this is maybe i'm rumor mongering now because <laughs> there, there must be a huge industry and infrastructure set up around that process in, yeah. in the medical industry um yeah but then uh, their ongoing costs of it. I don't know, maybe the ongoing costs aren't that high now because it's so established, but I can imagine there's a sales push, somebody coming along going, right, this is the latest digital technology, you yeah. won't have any ongoing costs apart from your monthly maintenance fee or whatever. Well, the thing, so actually the, one, the interesting thing was, so when I first started, you used to have to do all of the developing in trays, like you would, um, mm -hmm. uh, and especially if you, so I was in university labs, right, and they couldn't afford it at the time, like a, an auto um, developer. And then they move to auto developers, but those auto developers break down all the time. Um, right. They leak, they break down. You have to have someone filling them up continuously. Yeah. Um, it's and like then, running a photo lab, ultimately, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Exactly, exactly what it is. And you need a dark room, right? So that's yeah. actually a space that people need to to maintain, or, or labs need to maintain, and things like that. Whereas the you don't need that if you are using um, a more digital uh, workflow. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. they have the same they have the same problems that you know photographers in general have <laughs> <laughs> anyway we've, we've digressed slightly there yeah, however right. there was a, an interesting point in that where you mentioned uh the university so do you work at the university at the moment i don't know i used to um right. i used to work for the university of cambridge i now work for a uh, biotech company um okay uh, just outside of cambridge Right, and so, uh, but the yeah. the university is like a big part of Cambridge life, isn't it? And yes, no, yeah. Let's a, let's move on to the the images that you you've sent through today. Um, do you want to have a look at the Cambridge ones? For, just seeing as we're talking about Cambridge, we might as well yeah, look yeah, at those ones, right? Let's we? go. With, sorry, I'm just as I unplugged you, my <laughs> my mouse stopped working. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> yeah, technical issues were on were at one point on. You're right, now they're expected mine. that, did they? No. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. Oh, there we go. Cool. Excellent. Right. Fantastic. So, yeah. So, do you um, have any connection to the university at the moment? Um. So, yes. I was. Well, so, I, I'm now an alumni of Hughes Hall. Um. Mm -hmm. I was a, a postdoctoral research associate of the of the college so i still have a connection to them to a to a small extent um i have a connection in that i'm also part of the uh, aussie rules football club um, right <laughs> part of the university <laughs> so i still have a connection with with the sports team um and as an alumni of a college you are still you are still allowed certain college privileges so i can go to i can have a certain number of meals or i can go to a certain number of lectures um and so I'm not part of the college life, but I am yeah. tangentially part of it. So, um, right. Yeah. So just to let everybody know that, that's watching, um, Al sent through this, a series of images that you've been taking in Cambridge, and immediately when you look at them all, they've they've got a lot a, a strong Cambridge University element yeah. to them. So I just wondered the, the backstory of like why you were there basically what's what's your connection to the these images that you've been taking um are, are you friends with the people that you've taken images of or some some of these are friends um yep. some of these are events that i went to as part of the uh, as, as part of being part of the uh, university at the time um mm -hmm. and so a lot of these are from actually so 
uh, Oxford and Cambridge have this thing called a Mabel held in June because obviously, um, yeah. and um, it's it's a it's a way of the students they finish all their exams they let their hair down it's a black tie event um, and each college has a different Mabel um, and they have a varying amount of money spent on them by the college depending on how it's, uh, how you know how much money the college has. Um, to, to spend on on these things but you have to pay for the ticket as well right so yeah these are, this is not a cheap affair either for the students i think i think they're about the cheaper ones are around a hundred pounds a ticket but it's unlimited food and unlimited booze while you're in there to a right. certain degree i mean within so within they, they make they, they're making the most of that situation then aren't they <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i mean i'm figuring actually this year there won't be one because of the unfortunate viral situation but oh yeah um, the the one I went to um, was at uh, the college I happened to be at called uh, Hughes. Um, yeah. Now they made the news a few years ago for a, a bit of a raunchy uh, theme. I think it was called Desires or something like that. Um, and they had a little YouTube video which had uh, scantily clad people sort of like um, in a forest of uh, of desire and stuff like that. Um, and so the next year, which is the year I went, um, they had toned it down a lot and it was it was to hark back for the old fashioned style um, balls. So if you've ever seen the film, uh, the, <laughs> the, the of celibacy year. Yeah. The celibacy year. Yeah. <laughs> so have you seen the film, the, is it the theory of everything about um, um, Stephen Hawking? Yeah. So in that there is a, there is a Mabel um, mm-hmm. in which they go, they go to, and it was supposed to be kind of reminiscent of that, that style. So it was, uh, yeah. And it was good fun. They had tent set up for music. They had bumper cars. They had little party games like coconut shies and stuff like that. So it was, it yeah, it was a bit of a. It, it wasn't the sort of it sorted affair that the um, the year <laughs> before was billed to be. That also wasn't really right. <laughs> well, maybe it happened behind closed doors or oh, not yeah. in front of your camera, basically. Yeah, not in my camera. <laughs> <laughs> so most of these images appear to come from that event is that right so most of them do some of the one some of the others are more from uh, so there's one that um part of university life or part of college life are these things called formal dinners um and it really is what you think it what, what it sounds like which is a formal dinner sitting in this great hall with um candelabras on the table and sort of black tie and gown event um and they happen twice a week for all, for most colleges and so one of the images, um, which isn't actually taken in the Great Hall because uh, in, in, in the hall because of um, uh, what well, they don't allow cameras at the time, um, which is fair enough. You're supposed to be there to, to talk to people and have a nice dinner. Yeah. Um, Are they banned cam- mobile phones as well? Pretty much. I mean, it's not they're not banned banned, but it's poor etiquette, right, to be talking to yeah. someone and then just be sitting there on your phone like you would. You wouldn't take your mobile phone for your dinner table. So. You know, it's kind of don't do it. I don't know. So, some people do, don't they? <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, you know, <laughs> but we like to think that we don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just happened to, I, I happen to take my, I've got a, an OM10 that um, uh, that I absolutely love taking with me. It's so light. It's so nice that I, I use that a lot. Um, and I just happened to squirrel that one away. And as we were walking um, all gowned up, I managed to take a quick snap. Um, and actually, it's one of my favorite images of just Cambridge and Cambridge life. Um, I don't know if you've got it there, but it starts with Cambridge means... 002. Which one, sorry? Cambridge 002. Let's bring that. I, I was just scanning through the photos so everybody could have a look at them while you were just describing the, uh, the backstory. So 002. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, so it looks that like one... you're, are you in, are you with these people as they're walking through? You're not just like an, an observer, you're part of it. Yes. So I'm actually part of this. So I was going for dinner um, and I actually ended up uh, walking nearer the back because I had realized there was a, what I thought would be a nice image here. Um, and so what I wanted to get was the idea of the college in the background. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, with the uh, so these are actually mostly postdocs um, and research fellows. These aren't necessarily students or some of them will be students. But the idea was to get them walking in their gowns towards the uh, college or the, the place where we go to eat um, to really give the the, the, the the idea of this gown and Cambridge academic sort of uh, feeling to it. Yeah. And to a certain extent, 
I had this vision of it being a little bit more, a little bit timeless in it as well, because mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't, or I haven't scanned it fully, but I don't think there's anything in this that looks super modern. So therefore, it could have been taken at any point within the last thirty years, maybe. I mean, so there's a security camera. Um, is there? That's, that's the thing that stands out. Yeah, the security camera just above the door, um, and I guess the drain pipes look quite modern. So the yeah, the drain pipes look. For, but actually, a lot of these, unless they're PVC plastic, they could still have been anywhere between uh, anything from the eighties onwards. Um, yeah. The, the PVC, the windows. I'm not entirely sure if they're PVC. I think they're wooden windows, actually. Um, but in general, I was going for a more timely feel. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of the, uh, the, the security <laughs> camera. <laughs> actually, it's a, it's a, as soon as you said, is, it, like, is there anything modern in it? My eyes were drawn to that. So, so. Yeah. But it looks like a security camera. I assume it is. I assume it is. No, I'm um, sure just, it is. just a quick question. I guess this is a bit of a can of worms question. No, Why no. are you shooting on film and in black and white? You know, how, is, is that something that you always... Do you, like, do you shoot digital as well or yep so i i started out shooting digital um so i uh, i'm in my early to mid 30s so i started so my first cameras were obviously all film cameras um and then i switched to digital but when i truly started photography i was shooting a digital camera and then on my 30th birthday my wife bought me a film camera one uh, a canon eos 33 to fit my canon eos lenses um, and I started shooting both, um, black and white and film, uh, film and, and color. Yeah. And what I decided was the, I started off really looking at color because especially as my black and white film was the Ilford XP2. So you need to use, um, C41 chemicals to process that anyway, or well, you don't have to, but it's better that you use the C41 process. Yeah. And then from a to start with from a technical ease of use perspective and getting the most out of it i just decided to switch to black and white and i wanted to try lots of different types of black and white films um, mm -hmm. and just see what i could get from them um and so then i decided and i was never really getting through the the chemicals for c41 uh, enough to justify the purchase and then just laziness took over from a lot of it. Just being able to use Rodno and just keep it on the shelf and then just like sitting there with um, stand development for a while um, took over. Then I got the, um, the the enlargers and I decided I really wanted to be get into printing a lot more myself. Mm -hmm. And because I don't have a, a scanner that can do um, 120 format I um, or medium format, I uh, ended up getting, when I, once I got the second scan, uh, the second enlarger that could do that, um, from a printing perspective, I moved to a, I moved to continually doing black and white on medium format, um, and I choose it mostly from an aesthetic point of view. So I like it in my street images, and I quite like it for certain images for um, landscapes. But I still mm -hmm. shoot digital a lot. Um, if I go on holiday and I really want to take, and, and I'm looking at it from a landscape photography perspective. I'll take both. Um, I normally take my, so I'll always take my, I have a Canon 6D Mark II, so I'll almost always take that with me if I go somewhere. Um, and I will always take my OM10 because I love that camera. Um, yeah. And then when I started getting more into medium format because I had a, the ability to be able to actually print from it, um, I have an Icon Netar that I, uh, I actually got from uh, this Emulsive Secret Santa last year. Oh, awesome. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. Um, and I used that a lot until I went to, um, I literally, just before lockdown, I ended up bought, buying a Mamiya RB67. And right. man, I love that the, camera. The beast. The beast, yeah. The I beast. love that camera. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been one of those things that I haven't really been able to get out and, and fully appreciate. Um, I did shoot some some color on it, some uh, portrait 160 the other uh, the other week um and mm -hmm. had silver pan develop it for me um and i'm starting to get back into some of the uh uh f color with the medium format i just want to see what it looks like and actually one of my one of my favorite photographers um martin schuller uh uses uh medium format for his portrait work mm -hmm. and um uh, he actually i think he uses portrait uh 800 
um, with that. And so I started to try and I wanted to see if I could start emulating some of that work as well at some stage. Um, right. But that's like, I guess that, that's I don't have any images for that at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the, um, the thing you were saying about kind of laziness regards C41 and the, the quantities and that sort of stuff, I, I can like I can associate with that. I I very rarely shoot color, and I was shooting it even less because I like processing everything myself rather than sending it off. And I found that I was just I just kind of stopped shooting color because I'd shoot the occasional roll. I was like, oh, I need to get loads of chemicals in. I need to mix them all up. The cost wasn't there. Like so, then I'd end up paying per roll to get those developed, and I hate doing that. <laughs> I really do. So it's just like. In the end, I bought the 5 liter C41 kits, and now I freeze them all in batches of 1 liters. Yeah. That's a good and idea. I, I did that 12 months ago, and I've not had any problems with anything that I've defrosted. Um, yeah. And that, that works out economically. That works out. It's still cheaper to do that than it is to send off the occasional roll. Now you just need, to, you need freezer storage space. That's what it comes down to. I mean, I don't need food, right? I can just put that no. in the freezer. <laughs> yeah especially on lockdown who needs food now <laughs> yeah. actually there's a, there's another uh reason that i shoot black and white mostly as well and that's i'm actually red green colorblind so oh, right. my, my, so when i shoot with my digital camera i shoot mostly with color and every time i present work to someone whether it's the camera club that i'm part of whether it's my wife whether it's some friends they always say oh there's a little bit of a red tint in that or oh a little bit of, and i'm just like I give up. <laughs> you don't have that problem with black and white. You should have. Um, it, you should have an exhibition where the only people allowed to go in are also red, green, colour blind. Then it won't be a problem. Yeah, have one of those little signs at the door, and it says, "If you read this, you can't come in." Yeah. <laughs> those, those can, can you get like glasses or something that simulate what it's like it's, and make everybody wear them? That could be a really cool art exhibition, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that could be really cool. <laughs> this is what the world looks like to me so it will look like it to you as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> right let's have a quick look through these images time flies by doesn't it <laughs> you're just wow. randomly talking about <laughs> well, i hope you have to with everyone <laughs> no well no one's no one's talking in the chat so that's either it means that they're listening or they're switched off who knows <laughs> well, right you know. so the images you've got they're like what one of the reasons, it's great that you've come on, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, but something I kind of wanted to start to do with my broadcast was to have people on to talk about their images because we had a bit of a chat before about how you kind of, you get stuck looking at your own images and you, you kind of lose that, not necessarily critical eye, but there's nobody just to go, forget that one. It's, there's, it doesn't work. It's it's not part of it. Um, so we just thought we'd basically just have a chat about your images today. And obviously with it, these things that the caveat as it's it's just my opinion ultimately it if anybody else who if anybody is watching if you've got any anything you'd like to say about as images please put them in the comments um i don't be think i would mind that's all be as harsh as you like um i, can, <laughs> I might rock backwards and forwards crying for a bit but you know i'll come out stronger <laughs> what what i i find really difficult is, are they, so i Last year, I made a zine of a load of photos uh, from a trip to Sri Lanka. And I've never done anything like that before. And so I printed out all the ones that I thought I wanted and a load of other ones as well, because people kept on saying to me, oh, you never know how they're all going to work together. So I printed out a load. And some of my favourite images I ended up taking out because they didn't work in the context of, of the rest of them. And it was the hardest thing to do because it's just like you have these personal emotional attachments to individual images but that like just actually like it just tears you apart just going oh no actually that that's no good in this for this purpose yeah you know? so I, I think a good way to approach it is kind of thinking about um where you're going to use these images what you're going to do with them you know if you're if you're picking one image out of this set that was going that you were entering into a competition your choices about that image are completely different to if you're making a zine or if you're doing an exhibition or if you're, I don't know, sending postcards to friends as like presents or whatever, you know, like you need to know what the images are for before you're kind of making those decisions. So what are you going to do with these images? That's my question. My 
So my overall plan is to try and get an exhibition with them. Um, so there, there are more that will come as part of this. This is a, an ongoing project. But it all started actually from, I went to the photographer's gallery uh, a couple of years ago, just as I got to the UK. Mm -hmm. And there were two main photographers that inspired me within doing this sort of thing. One was actually Tish Merthyr, um, yeah. not because of Cambridge or anything like that, um, but it was her unim her youth unemployment exhibition, I think it was there, or, or it was a collection of her works, but I, I particularly liked her youth unemployment work. And then I went downstairs, and I don't know if anyone's been to the photographer's gallery, but downstairs there's like a, a section where you can sell, where some people can sell their images. Yeah, um, past exhibitions and things like that. And there was one and guy. You can buy who, overpriced film as well down there, can't you? Way, way overpriced film, yeah. <laughs> um, and um, one of the photographers that was there, and I don't remember his name unfortunately, but I, he was either at Oxford or he was at Cambridge, and it was just a Mabel. And I think the exhibition that he presented was called Mabel, and it was from right. the 80s. And it was just all these pictures of people in a in the college life, sort of, um, and. Uh, part of the uh, yeah part of the Mabel I think and just sort of it inspired me to think well actually that's something that I could work on it's you know an update it's 30 years later what is it is it similar is it different um I wanted it to stand up on its own and so it started more as like emulating what he had done and I didn't see his full exhibition I literally just saw the few that were there to be sold um yeah. and I decided that I really wanted to try and do something that would document my time at in Cambridge um, yeah. and at the same time just sort of have a little bit of a, an insider's look um, with that so so I sort of started as I started it about three years ago and it's still ongoing um, I actually started it so before like, I tied in with that you were saying earlier that you might be going back to Australia at some point as well yeah so you you immediately you know that even though this is a, a long-term project you know it's not completely open-ended you you have got a fixed time frame to 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 capture these images yeah and that's why i thought to actually start printing them so i started printing them fairly recently um i have stacks of um of negatives that i i tend to print my neck i tend to develop my negatives and then i look at them and then i put them away for ages um and then i come back to print them because i find that the ones that i'm i've put away i then become more attached i i, I become less attached to certain images over time mm -hmm. i think that's a good thing um yeah. but then i um but yeah i'm only here for a short, shortish period of time. I, I haven't defined when I'm going to go back to Australia yet. Probably next couple of years, which means I now have to start printing. I have to start thinking about these images as a collection and then start finding somewhere that I can exhibit them, whether that's the coffee shop, whether that's um, wh wherever. I'm probably yeah. going to put these into a zine as well. Um, okay. Yeah. I'd love to put them into a book and sell a photo book, but I don't think anyone's <laughs> <laughs> so like, fundamentally it's like it's a documentary project that yeah. you want to tell a story about well, we'll come back to the specific story in a second but you want to tell the story through a sequence of images um and your connection to that story is that you're associated with uh, the university so you've got access to various things as well um you know a few people there and that's kind of where it's snowballing from what what is the story you want to tell so there's there's two sides of it really there's one which is the what's it like inside uh, Cam uh cambridge effectively because not there's a lot of um from people who haven't been here or haven't come into the system there's a lot of people have their minds made up as to what cambridge is like what the people mm -hmm. are like um, and some of that is correct and some of it is completely way off the mark or at least from right. my experience yeah and really what I want to show is just um, it's going to be from my eyes and look I'm originally from the south of the UK so I have a fairly privileged background um, uh, you know I didn't grow up rich or anything but I uh, didn't grow up hungry um, mm -hmm. I then uh, moved to, uh, backwards and forwards from Australia and, and the UK for half my life as well. And so I have a different perspective to a lot of the students, but it's interesting that you should, uh, it's interesting that people like me who worked for the university don't necessarily come from the background that people expect 
the university uh, people who work at the university to have come from. There are lots right. of international people who who run the university effectively and who did not have privileged backgrounds. Yeah. They didn't have uh, this thing. So really, what I was trying to do was just show a different side or just to show what I saw at the university as we went through. And some of that is with this Cambridge Two image, people wearing gowns. And some of that is people just literally getting drunk and partying down like any other normal person, at the, <laughs> you know, between the age of 18 and 25 or as I am, 34. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop. <laughs> when it stops, there's no going back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you want to kind of show um, not a hidden side necessarily, but kind of almost change the, a mass, the, percept, the main perception of, of Cambridge um student like students seem to be the emphasis on these images but like i s potentially staff involved in that as well and the whole infrastructure around and like the environment yeah. okay uh right so how these the, all the images that you sent me they're all you've, you've gone straight to dark room prints with these and scanned the dark room prints is that right yes so yeah, so these are all darkroom scanned prints. Um, I did have some of some of these have also been scanned in as negatives, but really what I wanted to do was um, just I wanted to challenge myself to have the exhibition as a darkroom print rather than as a uh, digital work for uh, you know, an analog with a digital workflow for nothing other than I just wanted to see if I could do it, put an yeah. entire in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like if you. Have you ever done kind of like a, a digital print exhibition before? Uh, no, I've not actually had any right. proper exhibitions before, so I, I, I'm setting the bar. <laughs> well, high this, for, like, I think uh, regards like a choice. You, if you've never done either before, you like I've I've never I've had a couple of images printed digitally or inkjet, but you spend as much time, if not more, going through that process as you do darkroom. Um, if you're just looking from a practical point of view, obviously, I think with darkroom, you've got the complete pleasure of printing in a darkroom anyway, which is part like a big part of it, like the sounds of it for yourself and, and for myself as well. Um, so the, like, I think that's if you if people are making a choice between whether to do digital or analog, it's just like, right, if you love darkroom printing, do the darkroom printing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. And, and that's the thing, right? Yeah. Um, so how many, uh, overall, how many images have you got? Is this the whole set that you've got so far? No, this isn't the whole set. Um, it's probably coming to an end. So I have, so from the, from the, uh, from the Mabel night, I actually have five rolls of film, um, mostly from HP five. So five times 35. Uh, 180 maybe 100 and something uh, yeah. well someone will correct Ish. <laughs> Ish. um and so uh and then i have other roles that i've taken at other points um and i'm always still taking more images um so i prom so i mean i think i've given you 27 maybe something like that uh, to, yeah. yeah 27 images um and these are just happen to be the one that i've actually been able to um to 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 print and mostly I'm happy with the way they've come out. Um, yeah. I'm always working on other images in the background. As for the number that I think I need, uh, I'm hoping, I, I have no idea, to be honest. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know when to stop and maybe having four <laughs> is not necessarily a good thing. Maybe I need to pare it down and have a few select ones. I think, I think it comes down to the, the context of where they're going. It just, my personal opinion so like if you're looking to do an exhibition um then you i don't know maybe 10 images of it, it depends where you're you're aiming to get them like exhibited but um and then if you're looking to a zine you're possibly going to want a lot more um, yeah. and and how they all connect together but i, th I think with either of those like what you what I think is also useful is to look have real standout images that tell a huge part of the story in one image, and it's like it's really eye catching and it's powerful because then you can use that as like your main image to hook people in. You know, it's yeah. like, this is what it's about. Um, it could potentially be a bit of a cliche. It could be a bit obvious, but as long as it's 
like it grabs people, then they'll be intrigued to see the rest. There's no point leading with something that's ultimately a bit visually boring, even though it might be an essential part of the story. Yeah. I think you need those really powerful key images. Um, so I think like it's not a bad place to start to kind of to think about what they would be. And like, you don't even have to have them yet. It's just yeah. something about when you're kind of telling the story. It's like, what would really tell this story? It's funny you should say that, actually, because I've been thinking, I've been trying to think about what that key, what is the what is the image that um, tells most of the story in the first instance? And I think it's going to, and, and what makes people interested? And I think it almost in this instance would have to be an image with people in it. Mm -hmm. um, just because I think we identify more with, um, uh, in general, people identify more with, uh, with, with images of people, right? Um, because originally I thought it would be something like, so I've got two images up. Uh, so Cambridge 27 and Cambridge 19, they're both the same image. Um, so I thought I would, and this was the one, this is my one that I showed you earlier, which is I printed and is the, um, it's actually on Twitter the other day. It, it, this has been shot on Ferrania uh, P, is it P30? Is that what it's called? Oh, the P30, yeah. Yeah. So this was given to, this was a test roll, uh, the alpha roll that was given to me by uh, Sandy, Mr. Biscuit. Hello. <laughs> funnily, um, funnily enough, I've got a roll of that loaded into my camera right now. <laughs> beautiful stuff. I love it. I, um, I really like the the strong backs well set across the, the white, like the, the contrast in the black and white, I think is beautiful. Yeah. Um, and like, funnily enough, mine was donated to me as well. I don't know what that says about the film, that people are just <laughs> giving it away. <laughs> I think, it says, well, I think it says good things, right? They want people to try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, or maybe they've tried it themselves and gone, yeah, this isn't for me. <laughs> I think it's definitely a, an acquired taste to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, these were... Uh, so the only difference, really, between these two images that we've got is one has the black border and one has no border. Um, and this was really to, to try and see whether or not the black border sets it off. But originally, as well, this was going to be my image to... Um, to hook people but now that we're talking about it i actually don't think it is i think it tells the story like it's pretty if you know cambridge it it, it tells you that it's cambridge but if you don't know cambridge it just looks like it's a church right it's it's king's chapel yeah like i think it's it's fairly iconic and i think a lot of people would recognize it as cambridge even if you've never been there or you don't really know anything about it i think it's it's fairly well known and even if it's not it's kind of it's enticing enough as a building to go, well, where is that? You know, it's, it's quite a, a, a strong image. I assume you're going on to say, but it's got no people in it. Yeah. So it has some very small people for a bit of scale down on the left hand yeah. side. But other than that, it has no, it, ha it has no, that extra, I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it, but that not extra bit to, to put it up. Whereas some of the other images, one of the other images that I, I really like, and I, I still don't know if it actually hits in, is called Cambridge 17. Okay, let's bring that up. And uh, yeah. Cambridge, Cambridge 17 doesn't show you that it's Cambridge. You have no idea that it's Cambridge, but what you do see are two young people in, a, uh, in one, you know, in, in nice attire, so uh, ball, ball gown and um, yeah. tie, having fun on bumper cars. Yeah, and I think that as the collection of the Mabel side, and and maybe is more powerful. I don't know if anybody has some um, something that they'd like to add to that. Whether they prefer one of those images or it's. Let's just bring them up side by side. I like. I personally don't think either of them are quite there regards telling the story that you're looking to tell. I think if if there was something. Um, about the bumper car one that maybe showed it was Cambridge or had a bit more context in the background. Yeah, I think I think that's that would work for that one. And then the same with the the church one. If there were people in the foreground, maybe on the grass having a picnic, and they looked studenty, maybe they were in their black tie attire. That would then yeah. make that one work as well. Yeah, and that's the thing that they're both. I think they just miss something but i don't know i mean maybe 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 it comes back to something like cambridge 2 which is the one we had up before where they're in the gowns and they're walking in front of the the, the building that they go to it yeah. kind of 
tells a bit more of the story. Um, I know I really like this one because I'm connected to it, but I, 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 I never want to put this one up forward at the f- first because I'm connected to it. Right. Um, yeah. But I, I, yeah. Just on like on a, a technical note as well. What are the like the scratches on the surface of that one? Are they actually on the negative? Let me get the uh, let me get the print out. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me pull it up on my thing. Because um, as, as much as I, like, I don't think technicalities are the be all and end all. I think oh, no, they're, they're on the negative. But, they're the ones that are on the negative. Right. So, I do think it's kind of there. There are elements of yeah. Um, whether it's distracting now, if there's a reason for the scratches being there, say like you scratch the hot all your images intentionally to try and make them look aged, then. That, that's something different but if this is just like an isolated case then unfortunately i don't think well, i think it could work um yeah but as as kind of like a it doesn't it, it wouldn't sit with the other images if they're not also like aged aged yeah no or um, so that was definitely not a deliberate aesthetic choice <laughs> <laughs> just go along and scratch all your nails. Yeah. <laughs> um so uh well yeah <laughs> So, just um, as, let's just have a quick look at other ones that kind of as as I'm like so I've got all the images as like kind of like a contact sheet on screen at the moment, um, and ones that kind of immediately jump out at me are Cambridge One, I think just because of the composition. Yeah. Um, Cambridge. Oh, don't I say Cambridge between in front of them all. Uh, number 11, uh, number 18. <laughs> number 18 uh, is, a, is a good friend of mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny you should say one. One, I I, I don't like one that much. Um, and it's not to do with the composition that I don't like it. It's because it seems like it's a... A very grainy image that I wasn't intending for grain to be in, right? But actually, I think it works. But it's just, uh, yeah, it's just one of those. Um, it took me a lot to actually print that properly, um, right? And I think I, I, I don't like it not because it's not a good image, or I don't think it's a good image, but just because of the pain I went through to try and get it to look. <laughs> you don't want to have to go through it again, basically. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> I, I. It's funny those little things that kind of put you off from doing stuff. So I. I quite I went through a phase of and I still do a bit actually of completely avoiding shooting medium format because uh, I could not be bothered to scan it because the workflow for scanning them was a lot longer than thirty five mil so it just kind of immediately put me off using it like as a, as a more general use format yeah. which is ridiculous isn't it because it's like it's such a small <laughs> part of the process but it's just like they always make you think oh i'll just shoot the 35 mil because i can have a load of images and just set the scanner up and walk away from it whereas so 120 what... it's just like oh, i've got to change it they don't quite fit in the negative sleeves you know it's just... <laughs> <laughs> that's why i've been shooting medium format for ages um I was, even though i had a medium format camera I had a couple of them but i never shot them because i had no way of easily getting them either digitally or printing them yeah. Um, and once I got the second and larger that I could print them, now I, I, I shoot a lot of medium format um, and I'm doing a lot less 35 millimeter at the moment just because I have a way of being able to print them easily. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just technically checking, making sure everything's running still. Right, we're all good. Um, right, so what would you... Where, where are you at at the moment? Are you like, are you like selecting? Are you trying to thin down this image selection? So to to a certain degree, I'd like to thin it down and basically get rid of the ones that clearly don't tell the story or are clearly just yeah. a bit not not right. Um, yeah. I tried so there's another there's a couple in here. So there's Cambridge Four and Cambridge Ten, which are the same image, just I've had slightly different things uh, done to it. So one yeah. of them is a solarized version of the other. Um, oh yeah. And and this was just sort of testing out, seeing what side of images that would work. And I, I, I put it up anyway just to show a, an extra solarization sort of technique and does it really work within this? Um, 
and I yeah I guess kind of I think I need more images in general because if I'm going to put these not only just in an exhibition but into a zine then I need to print some more up and see where they fit um, but uh, in general I'd like to thin some of these down and just get rid of the ones that I look at all the time but have no idea what to whether or not they fit or not right okay like the the ones of the actual of, of the students kind of partying um i think there's clearly a collection there and you could probably thin like just a quick scan over it like my i'd say there's probably like five or six really strong images within that lot um and then you've got the more kind of architectural ones so what I'm going to do on my screen is just kind of group them together in those themes. Um, now the only like so the the kind of environment ones that you've got, mm -hmm. the thing that kind of stands out to me from them is they seem quite disconnected from the other ones. So there's no story link between them. Um, yeah apart from number two where you've got the people in it and like but they're not wearing the same they've got they've got gowns on as opposed to um the black tie so it's like there's still there's not really a connection between those ones so i think this was this was part of my worry about this as a collection of images is actually they're probably more two collections and mm -hmm. that there's the architectural ones, which actually the gown one could fit into that anyway as well as a bit as a giving a little bit of context in with that. Um, and then you've got the the let's, let's call them the party images, and those are yeah. sort of two separate uh, two separate things going on really. Yeah. Um, and I, I I have often wondered whether I should just separate them out completely, and just have maybe maybe rather than having it as a Cambridge collection, it is Mabel. And another one is Cambridge. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I do kind of agree with that. I think there's not enough connection. Like, so let's take uh, 26, right? You've got a nighttime long exposure. It wouldn't necessarily be Cambridge. If that had the party goers walking along that path at that point, then you've got a strong connection between the two. Yeah. And I think it's a, a different... A, like the, the party ones, they look like they're all in the same environment. So I think if you were able to get some of those, but in like almost like your wide-angle establishing sort of shots yeah. in in the environment that is Cambridge, like you've got them, but they're, they're missing the people. Yeah. So that, that's... That's the thing for me. It's like I want to see drunken students walking along that path late at night, you know. Yeah. And it might like if you were to take that photo, it might be that like it's the one photo you take that night, you know. And it doesn't yeah. even actually have to happen on the same night, I guess. I don't know. It depends yeah. how <laughs> authentic you want to be with your with your storytelling. Um, but I, I think there's a, a case for maybe thinking about what photos you want to capture and actually making sure you're in the right place at the right time now to get those to tie it all together yeah to be more strategic about what i'm taking and uh, for the exhibition i guess in that or to tie everything together yeah what well, so the, the if you were to do that that's very much going down the route of this is the story of uh, the students almost um yeah. And uh, like so, other images that you've got do they show other elements of university life and of the individuals there? So a lot of it is more is it they're, they're not black tie based ones. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it's kind of more they're people sitting. I, I've got so I've got a couple of people sort of sitting and um, uh, eating at a table, and then there's just sort of. A couple of sport-based ones people doing uh university sports um and then i haven't really got any like lectures etc because you know that would kind of probably be a bit rude to walk into someone's <laughs> lecture <laughs> um 
Uh, but I, I, think, have... like, I think this is like when you're doing like a, a documentary series, if that image is kind of needed to tell the story, I think you've got to go through the process of getting access to those those shots. Ultimately, yeah. like otherwise, it's just a case of like, well, I happen to be there at the time, which is fine, you know. But I think that's something different to right. I want to tell this story. How do yeah. I do that? And if that involves trying to get access to certain situations, then yeah. you've, you've got to go for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I do have, as I've got friends within the within the university system, um, I should definitely be able to get some access to a certain degree. And I'm still part of it. So, um, uh -huh. yeah, it's kind of, some of it's been my own hesitancy as well, I think. Um, there have been images that I've got in my head that I would really love to get, but I've always been uh -huh. very hesitant about trying to get it. Um, yeah. partly because, you know, I don't want to uh, upset people or I don't want to, to, to put a foot wrong sort of thing. Um, and, yeah, as you say, a lot of it's just plucking up the courage and asking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think like, as you start to build up these these images, which, which you're doing already, there's potential for to actually to show them to people and say, look, this is what I'm working on. Yeah. I'd really like to be in this environment to try and, capture an image that complements it and works with it and then that there's no it takes the fear away a bit i think of like just blindly walking up to me and saying oh can i come and take photos of you doing this it's like there's you've got a purpose to it you know yeah you know and now i think they're more likely to agree as well if, if you show that you've already put a lot of effort into it and yeah. <laughs> it would work really well with it oh, cool Right, should we have a? We've, we've kind of gone off a bit of tangent there. Let's 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 run through these images and see if we can just pull them, like thin it down to like I don't know, three to five. <laughs> cool. That's that's savage. So the first thing I'm going to do is completely take out all the uh, just architecture ones. So anything without people in, I'm just. Because I don't want to like batter them off against the ones with it's, it's, it's mainly just the party ones. Let's just focus on those. Um, so how do we do this? Now, just trying to remember my Lightroom shortcuts. Oh, what have I done here? <laughs> <laughs> and then flagged. No flagged photos. That's worked well, isn't it? <laughs> Is it P that flags? I can never remember. So, yeah, it's P, isn't it? I pressed F, which is full screen. Um, <laughs> and then we put flag first. Right, okay, I've done it. <laughs> Small today. So I've got um, Cambridge 5. Start with that. So this, this is actually the sort of image I was talking about a minute ago, where you've got a wider shot that's showing the architecture and it kind of places it a bit more um although it doesn't it's still a, a bit ambiguous you don't entirely know it's cambridge but you've got people dressed up going into a, like a formal event so i think a shot like this but in something that's more iconic cambridge really would place it yeah so quite out, out of this these these ones i think that's actually quite a good starter and chronologically it's it's the beginning of the night as well isn't it yeah so how like <laughs> this is a tricky minute what are your top what would you say your top five are from the party ones yeah so i i like cambridge five I like, yeah. uh, I actually, from a story perspective, I like Cambridge 11 and I like Cambridge uh, 20. They're the two poker ones. 20, yeah. Um, so because I'm connected to him, I, re I I like Cambridge 18 as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I think, for some reason, Cambridge 12, I keep coming back to it. And I, th there's two reasons for that. 
and it's the two people in it that you could that, that you're immediately drawn to one is the guy in the bow tie and i i have no idea who he is i just i think he's got a really infectious smile <laughs> and, then, and he's clearly having a good time he's chatting to someone um he's in, and then there's the the girl on the right who is looking at i'm not sure if it's actually the band or if it's a person that she's talking to but yeah. there's just a light there's this there's something quizzical about what she's looking at and it just i i think it just reflects the two like two different uh viewpoints in one image that they're kind of like two people having two slightly different uh, she, she's got concentration tongue yeah <laughs> she's like the tongue's very slightly out focused on something and yeah he he's he's got like what looks like an incredibly false smile on his face yeah <laughs> <laughs> so how much longer do i have to be here <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but i don't as I, I i don't really i mean it doesn't really tell you uh, on its own i don't think it gives you anything that much but within the context of the story i think it it, it can work but i don't yeah. know if yeah yeah i agree I th- there's there's lots going on in it um I think the area over to the left of so S- smiley guy whoever he's talking to to the left of her that feels like there's, a, there's feels like a lot of dead space and yeah. to the top of the image as well the, the good thing about the top of the image is it like it really shows that it's in a marquee yeah so it's not like this is like a temporary structure uh, put up for this this whole purpose of just this party so immediately you can say, well, this is actually quite extravagant, isn't it? You know, those marquees are expensive and everything. It's like, and everyone looks quite young. It's like, this is quite extravagant in some ways, even though it's it's just a marquee. Yeah. Especially if you place it next to a, a shot of people playing poker, because you're just like, well, why are people playing poker next to like a, a party <laughs> marquee? You know, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah. So let's just, I'll just bring up those together. Um, so if you, if you bring them all side by side, the, I think having two poker ones is unnecessary really. Yeah. Um, and gives an opportunity for getting some other story elements in there. These, which poker ones that, um, sorry. Uh, 20, I think, t- like, it's, it is quite nice. Technically, I think it's really nice, but I think it misses the connection because the other one, you actually see them thinking about what's going on. And there's one guy who's almost, like, because he's holding his hand, head, hand up to his head, he's almost, it's almost like uh, there's some, he's, he's saying something within that which you don't yeah. get for when you just see the cards on the table. Yeah, I, I, I like the kind of the seriousness actually in that photo in comparison to all the other photos. So everybody else is like clearly drunk, having a great time. And these guys, they're like, it's like they've actually got money <laughs> on this game. I don't know if they have or not, but <laughs> there's an element of tension in it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's regards like, just like from a technical print point of view, it it's it, it looks different to the other prints because they're like it's quite a grey print, isn't it? Like it needs. I think their faces need uh, bringing out more so that uh, you really see that light on the side of their faces from the the highlight in the scene. Yeah, that's got yeah. Try and work on that and get that to to really stand out. Yeah, but I think that that's a good image. Um, do you like what so are you going for the same aspect ratio for all the images as like a consistent element to them all i was trying to originally i was printing on 8 by 10 and then the majority of these have now been printed actually on uh the 12 by nine and a half um okay at a custom aspect ratio that i created using a uh what do you call it um mass um oh, no, this thing what do i, I, I board. Board. Matt board, thank you 
probably <laughs> mask board. I was like, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> That'll <Or>, do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, and so part of the consistency that I was trying to get was that aspect ratio with, within yeah. that. Um, they could be different. They could be different sizes, um, but keeping the same ratio. Um, I was sort of just toying with the idea of keeping them at, um, at all at the same size as well. Um, and I don't know how that would work from an exhibition aesthetic perspective. Uh, it, it would be it'd be fine. It's it's your choice. <laughs> it's your creative <laughs> choice, ultimately, isn't it? But I'm, yeah. I, I'm just thinking that that poker picture. I'm just having a quick fiddle with it in a Lightroom. If my computer will let me. I just think it might work, be a little stronger in a slightly different aspect ratio. Yeah, um, I mean, so this this particular one I think was printed uh, on eight by ten, so it wasn't printed using that uh, matte board frame. So uh, you know, okay. it's, um, it's something I was trying to develop as I went through with this. But I'm yeah more yeah. than happy to, to cut it down and make it a stronger image. You'll have to look back at the stream to see what I've done there. <laughs> just a small, like I've just, I've just made it a little more landscape and increased the contrast on it slightly. Um, just so the side of the faces that are catching the light have just got more, more yeah, white to like, them. Yeah. Um, no, I, I actually I agree that that does make it, and and because you can see the poker chip still in that, you still know it's a poker table. Yeah. And you don't yeah, and I, I think I think you're kind of you're enticed into that. It's like immediately my eyes drawn to the faces. It's a shame the one on the guy on the left is kind of turned away because I think if he was turned in a bit, it yeah. would pull your eyes towards the centre more. However, yeah. the guy in the middle is brilliant because he's looking down, and that then makes your eyes look down in the image and go right. What are they doing? Oh, it's a poker table, and then like. I start looking around to see, right, well, now I've seen the guy on the right and he looks unhappy <laughs> about what's going on, you know, and yeah, it's like you you then move around the image to see what, and then you've got somebody in the background as well in it, in a dress, um, got a bit of the environment in there as well, but I don't think that's too distracting, um, what's going on, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd put that one in my top five as well, yeah, um, it's it's the open faces towards the camera without them actually looking directly at the camera. I think works really well. Yeah. yeah. It's funny actually because it's a complete contrast, as you say. And, and I've been thinking about it. And I don't think I consciously thought about it when I and I didn't really con when I was printing or even when I took the image um, to with one that I didn't choose to come in, but Cambridge Seventeen which is still the young people having fun or doing something at the ball, but it's the one where they're in the bumper car. So yeah. it's complete contrast to that. And they're just yeah. no cares in the world. They're just bumping around, you know. Um, I was actually in a bumper car at the time as well, taking images <laughs> of them as they bumped <laughs> into me. Yeah. <laughs> and so... Um, no, it's good. Yeah, I, I, that's, that is a standout one for me as well. Yeah. If anybody is still watching and you'd like to uh, contribute to what your favorite images are um please put them in the comments or the chat um i'll also mention that they are also on um, i'll plug my website so i can say that if you go to alexander.com oh, yeah. um, and then click on darkroom prints you'll be able to see them there as well so um yeah if so if i was more in tune with the uh, the technology, I'd probably be able to bring that up on the screen right now, but I can't, so I'll stick it in the show notes afterwards. Right. <laughs> uh, right. Plug. You're sorry? I did my shameless plug. Oh, that's not a shameless <laughs> plug at all. <laughs> if you were shifting prints from it as well, then I'd be like, what are you doing now? Yeah. <laughs> be more subtle about it. <laughs> I put you, you put something in the background. It's like buy now. <laughs> yeah, just have a, have a display there with like prices hanging <laughs> off them. <laughs> Sale now on. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, the the Ryanair approach. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's uh, let's pick a couple more images to look at from this. So uh, let's look at uh, the one. So I think we can take 
uh, 20 out of the equation. Yeah, I agree. Um, just because it's a duplicate. I'm, I'm going to commit to this and unflag it. Um, so let's have a look at 18, which I really like as well. There's a, there's a connection between you, the photographer, and this guy as well. I think like whether you knew him or not, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's a guy in the back right as well, which has just got the most amazing face on him, which where the, it seems to be where the focus is as well on the picture. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, oops. That was my classic. I didn't want to have to think about focusing and think about um, uh, settings too much because, you know, let's be honest, I was also quite drunk at times. Um, <laughs> I, was trying the, I was trying the F8 and B there method and pushing the film. It was uh, HP5, I think. And so I, right. I was trying to push it to 1600 and just sort of trying to, uh, yeah. What was it? The famous thing is F, uh, yeah, F8 and B there. Yeah. So I was trying to focus and also uh, yeah, set, set more of his own focus and then just sort of shoot as I saw. <laughs> well, and this kind of ties into thinking about how images could be improved because it's like under certain circumstances it's like it's like saying oh i wish i'd made this pinhole shot this pinhole photo should be sharper it's like well under those circumstances you can't do that so it's like yeah. these are the constraints that you were shooting under so there was nothing you could do about like make well i suppose you could have changed the focus on that but it, <laughs> like there are there are limitations to kind of what you can do when it, like if something's wrong or perceived it, as being wrong. Yeah. Well, this was quite a spontaneous shot as well, right? So it was, I, um, my friend was coming up to me to say, Hey, let's get another drink. And, yeah. um, so he's almost finished his beer there. And so he was sort of, let's get another drink. And I, and as I saw him coming towards me, I just literally took it up and took a photo rather than, um, cause I just really liked the, you know, the face that he had on him. Um, yeah. and just, you know, I knew what was so, happening. What, what I, it reminds me of photos from when I was a teenager. It's like <laughs> you're out, you're drunk, like the per, inevitably the person that you're taking a photo of isn't in focus, and it's something in the background, and it's yeah. like it's it's got that feel about it. Like it really, as a viewer, it reminds you of being in that situation. Like, yeah, everything's out of focus because you're a bit drunk. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not gonna lie, I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I think it says that perfectly. But and it's like it's just a, like composition wise, it just works, doesn't it? Even like I think it actually works better, possibly because he is out of focus. Because your initial thought is like you want him to be in focus, but then when you look at it, he's not. So your eyes drawn to the right, where there's yeah. potentially something more interesting to look at that is in focus. Yeah. So I think that's a, <laughs> that's a winner, if you ask me. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let him know as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's done well. Right, so we've got uh, number five, number 18, and number 11, I'd say, are uh, keepers so far. Um, what else? Uh, to do the six. So look at that. I'm not that keen on that. Um, I don't know why. I find so I found this one a real struggle to to print as well. Um, mm -hmm. It's so contrasty in different areas. So if you look at the the girl at the forefront, she's there must have been. I think she was walking right past the light at the time, and yeah. so to get her and and your eyes are immediately drawn to her to start with because she's so bright, but there's not enough detail, and she's not sharp enough within that to be i think to carry the photo forward yeah. um whereas I, and, and whereas in the background it's, it's sort of the end of the bumper car ride right so there's sort of um uh there's a story that it's the end of the bumper car ride but i'm not sure it's necessary no and like you can't tell that either I, like to me the most interesting thing about the picture is what's above them it's almost as if they're walking under a, a venue you know and you're like behind the scenes at um yeah. an arena or something like that and this is all like backstage you know it's got that sort of feel yeah. to it um uh, so i don't it doesn't 
like if it if it were to be the end of the bumper car ride, you almost I think want a shot that encompasses the bumper car as well. You can almost see yeah. them getting off off that ride. Um, yeah, I'm taking it out. I'm getting, I'm getting brutal now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going for it. <laughs> come out of this with one image for my uh yeah for, uh, <laughs> <for> my <laughs> I, like as hard as it is i think sometimes that's what needs to be done though isn't it because you're just like okay yeah. that image works and then you use that as an anchor for where you go with the project as well because like this image works because of this reason yeah just move on from there you know and that's not to say the other images couldn't work in a different context or for something yeah. else and they're not good images yeah um it's just it's just Going it's, it's funny as I've been going through this process, not just today, but in general, thinking about it. I think, whilst as a photographer slash artist, you don't owe anybody anything or any explanation, you really do to a certain extent where you owe your viewer some like a thought pattern that goes through something that they can like a, something that they can find right and that they can they can follow, and I guess. Yeah, it's it's a tricky one, that isn't it? Because it's, I think you want, you kind of, in this situation, like it's, it's, you're documenting something, so you want people to understand that story that you're telling them, and you kind of, it's nice to have some surprises along the way and things that are a bit hidden, um, but fundamentally, you don't want to put people off looking at your images for <laughs> for whatever reason, whether that's technical or. Just whatever it is that makes the viewer go, mm, I'm not interested in that. And obviously everyone's got different tastes and what have you, but ultimately you're telling a story and you you don't want to detract from that um, for through whatever means. I'm probably waffling now, aren't I? <laughs> it's, it's really easy to just go off on tangents where your head's just like, do I think that? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> is that how i think i'm not sure <laughs> it's perfectly fine right like <laughs> yeah uh right so the next one that's really standing out i do like i think it's the dodgems one number 17 yeah uh So just quickly, really, like what's going through my head when I when I look at them seven. Like there's no one looking at the camera, in it. Um, you've got you can kind of see one person. I think that almost it's it's a confident shot to take if you're kind of if you're just a passerby, but you need to get down the front. And be in the middle of that stage, looking over yeah. on the crowd for that for that photo to work. I think. Yeah. Um, taking that out. Number eight. Bizarrely, everyone looks a lot smarter in that photo <laughs> than the other ones. I like personally. I'll take that out again, just because. Like, there's there's nothing. Like the sharpest part of the image is like where your eye goes is to the left. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing really happening there. Um, so I'd, I'd take that out as well. Number nine. Well, this is grainy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's all happening. Stand, develop, and, uh, um, and yeah, push as hard as you can. Very nice. Um, What's, what's that story? So, so like, is that like a food store or something behind? Yeah. So this was the where you would pick up your yeah, food. Um, right. And they yeah, they had the food running through the night. These are all night affairs as well, right? They go on until six a.m. the next morning. I did not stay till six a.m. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're gonna have to stay. You're gonna have to stay up all night at one time. Catch it, like, yeah. to get that photo of them all walking along that road. With the street yeah. lamps, you're gonna to have to stay out all night, or just get up early in the morning and just do it then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah get up at six a.m. and, and yeah. get the shot. <laughs> um, I take I take number nine out as well because I think this, the thing that I guess is key in that image 
is the food. You know, this is yeah. where this is how they're feeding themselves in the night. Feeding themselves, they've been given food, um, but you can't see it. So, like yeah. for me, the shot needs to be taken from like where the gas canisters are, looking back towards them as they're they're filling their plates. Yeah. Um, let me know if you th- if I'm being too harsh with these. <laughs> It's funny. I think I have to go dig through my negative scenes, but I'm pretty sure I have some of those those sorts. Some of these images that you've been talking about, I, I'm pretty sure I actually have them. I just haven't printed right. them up yet. So, um, which will be good because I can actually go through and make the story stronger more it, easily. It could, like as as we're doing this, I'm immediately kind of thinking about how I'm approaching it, and I'm going for like kind of obvious shots in a way. Um, Whereas some of your image, they're not as obvious, but the information's there, like it's telling the story. Um, I, I take 10 out as well, sorry, I'm just carrying on because I'm very aware of time here. Um, I'm taking wow, 10 yeah. out because that could just be a band anywhere. It doesn't yeah. add to it. Number 12, I really, like, that is, that's growing on me. You know, it's possibly crop see in the bottom left there's like that little bit of white could be someone's arm or something i'd yeah. possibly pull that left edge in a bit um but like you've got the metal bar at the front that shows that there's a stage there or there's something that the, the two girls are looking at and you've got the guy in the middle that your eyes immediately drawn to just going what's going on here and everybody else in the background just kind of milling around and, and filling the space and then you've got this huge like head room to the image which almost kind of shows this grand scale to just a marquee. You know, it's a massive marquee that to be like that. I, I quite like that element. <laughs> so that's that's in thirteen. Um, Tony's ice is. The problem is they're not eating ice cream. No, they're not, are they? They all they all need cones with flakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's take it out <laughs> uh 14 take that as well like yeah so 14 was the one i was saying before where i have the image but you can see the scratch right across her face oh uh, right yes yeah and that's the condenser and larger unfortunately I like it. well <laughs> I'm hoping that I would be able to. Was it? I keep reading somewhere a bit of nose grease and maybe the yeah. uh, um, uh, uh, the other style. And I can't remember really call it now. But um, whether or not that will be able to fuzz it out a little bit. Yeah, well, I, I think you could probably just retouch that very slightly as well on the print. Um, have you ever tried retouching with? Um, not yet. With the pens, yeah, you could you could retouch that out fairly easily the, the only like the reason i say take that out is it's a posed photo right yeah. so and the the, sh- the focus is on the bush in the background now yeah. unless there was if there was something crazy going on say to the right of them like our right of them yeah. then i would say that, that could work really well if you had loads of detail about like they're just standing there posing for a photo and there's more story happening in the background i think a shot like that could be a keeper but yeah. because the, there's no context to the, the image it's out it's out for me no and you're right it's missed uh, because it's a post shot they need to be in focus and they're not hmm. and, unless you want the viewer to see what's going on it's in the background going yeah but yeah yeah uh, number 15 is next for me so it's the coconut shy which i quite like actually it's a bit like a bit mysterious um and in the context it kind of it shows the scale of this event that it's not just a party in a marquee you know it's like you've got coconut shy you've got um you've got the poker going on as well it shows the variety of th- the things happening in it so that's that's a potential key for a guard story. Sixteen, I think, is out for me as well. Um, kind of just looks like a wedding photo. Yeah. Uh, Twenty, twenty-one, I think, ties back to that post photo. So they're obviously posing for another photographer. 
but that by you taking this photo tells the story of people posing for photos you know it's yeah it's like a it's a formal event and you've just got the bikes on the left as well which is yeah. like a key cambridge thing to get in there isn't it yeah right so is, is the bikes more oxford or do they have a lot of bikes in cambridge as well yeah, 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 loads of bikes. Just as many in Cambridge as they do Oxford. <laughs> okay, so that, that, that's that's relevant. And you've got the bunting in the window at the background as well. So that, I actually quite like that. I'd, I'd, I'd like the shot to be a bit wider, actually, so you could see more bike. I might even have this. I think I may even crop, have cropped that down, so I might even be able to, to do it, print, reprint this as a wider okay. image. So how have you... the um... Just on this print of 21, you've got mm -hmm. this kind of like very organic cut out frame and it looks like a drop shadow on it as well. Is that just from the, the board, the way you've cut it out? Yeah, so I so when I cut the uh, mat board, I also kept the inside frame. And mm -hmm. then I've tried to, um, uh, I then it slot that back in. In this instance, I think what I've done was, um, this was by, ac by accident, um, when I try and once I do my final print, I then uh, I put the the middle back in. I then take the negative out and I blast white light onto it. Right. What sometimes I forget to do is to take the negative out or the negative carrier out, so it then sort of blasts a bit of the image itself. Yeah. <laughs> to the uh, the image, and I think in this case, what I've what's happened is um, I it's moved slightly as well, so it sort of blasted it. Yes. You've got like a drop shadow effect on it, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> so it was a, a, a sort of happy accident. <laughs> and it, it, it's it's quite interesting. I'd, I'd like I do like I'm going down the route myself of like it's complete cliche, but you know, like when you see images with the sprocket holes there, and you just see them everywhere. And I, I hate it, but it does reinforce the fact that it's handmade. So. Yeah. You, like a lot of the prints that I do in the dark room, it's like I'm not really telling the viewer that this is something that's been handmade. You know, and I, I want to differentiate that in my images. And I think this kind of black border that's made through the exposure process does that. And I, I really like it, especially as like I, a lot of the images I take, I do crop. I'm not, I don't care about cropping or anything like that. So it's like I can't have the image at full size and then like the natural border from the negative to create that frame i've got to create like you've done here with the, with the mount card over the top and i really like it i think it, it just it adds to that handmade element yeah and it's, it's funny that's i um that's what i've been um trying to so as, as uh, you can tell the difference between the earlier prints and the later prints are the ones that the later ones have this border of some sort around um, in fact, some of them I've even done things like I've cut like a little um, uh, extra wedge in it. So you see like this little uh, triangular wedge just yeah. subtly at the corner of the image just so that I can basically. So I, I, it's like a it's a it's my image. Like you know, yeah. this is one that I've printed and you know that it's come from me because it's got that yeah. wedge. <laughs> Signature. So it's like signing yes. it, isn't it? It's like it makes... yeah. and I, I really like that. I think I think if you like you had a final set of images and for every one, you handmade a different cutout, so they were all slightly different. I think that would, it's a crazy amount of work, depending on how many images you produce, but I think it would make every one really unique then. Yeah. Um, even though what's going on, is the, the main image is very kind of traditional black and white documentary work, you've then added this handcrafted element to the, the printing process. Right, so I've got six, seven images on my screen, um, which are 5, 11, 18, 17, 12, 15, 21. Wow. Sounds like it's a, a bingo call out, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Legs 11. Yeah. Um, 12. <laughs> And to me, they're the sh I think they're the strongest images. Um, but it's it, it's literally yeah. about the party, isn't it? Like yeah. it's, that story is the party. 
that's more images than I thought I would get back from this sort of process as well. So I'm actually fairly happy with that. From uh, I like, think it's all yeah. about like it's it's the context though, isn't it? It's like picking out the strongest images for the party. That like, I think that could be reduced down to probably five and still tell the same story. Um, yeah, I think you could almost get rid of uh, maybe maybe even oh no, actually you can't. I was going to say you could get rid of 12, but 12 puts the context of the party somewhere else. Like you've got you've got going in, you've got the poker, you've got the somewhere else, which is the marquee. Then you equally have the um, uh, coconut shy, which is another location w within the same party, and you can tell it's within the same party. Then you've got um, slightly drunk image. Then you've got people having fun within the bumper car, and you also have the image of people having their image taken, which yeah. is probably the weakest actually out of those. I might as just looking at this, um, I would argue, but. Yeah, I think it is. I think like back to like what your bigger over bigger story is. I think that is actually quite a strong image though, because it it places it more in yeah. Cambridge simply from the bikes. Yeah. You know? Yes. No. Um, I, I wonder if it's almost the the starting image as well, right? It's it is the one that does place it a bit better, and we know it's a party scene. It's in Cambridge, or or, or you know, because of the bikes. It's yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a documentary because it's someone there is an action going on which is somebody is taking an image of these students and you can tell it's in a in, you know within a part as within a party setting um the, yeah i i think the thing that's missing from these is the the end of the story the end of the night yeah. um <laughs> Isn't that, and unfortunately the end of the night was it was half past three in the morning and I was too <laughs> old to be able to carry on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have, yeah, I think maybe I should wait and um, get up at 6 a.m., I think, and then uh, capture them and the next the next one coming through. Yeah. You know, next day, but for the, from the next ball. I, the, actually, I think the, the weakness that I kind of got to with these as well is they're all about the people. There's no environment. There's no kind of quirky shots. Almost, it's, so they all kind of get a bit lost because of that. Um, can you see the the way I've arranged them on the stream? Yeah, with uh, yeah. the 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 photography one at the first one, and then yeah, uh, the uh, the guy at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a bit of a disconnect between the first and the second one because it's it's daylight and then it's night. Yeah. So like what happened between those two? Um and the guy at the end isn't really sitting within those now, I don't think. Yeah. It kind of it kind of works with the other crowd one under the marquee. Um but I don't know if it I think it's a choice between one of those two in this set. Yeah, I think so. The biggest, yeah, for me actually, just looking at these now, the biggest outlier here is almost the day versus night. Yeah, which is a shame because I really like that image on its own. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know what other people think. <laughs> no, no, there's, no one's commented to either. I was going to say, the, either the chat's broken, people have switched off, <laughs> or yeah. people are too afraid to say anything. They're um, wowed by the uh, image. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're bowled over by your photos, and they're just crying in a corner somewhere, because they're like, how could I ever... That sounds incredibly sarcastic about your work. It's not meant to be at all. They're great. They are great photos. <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're fine. But I think, you know, I'm more than happy for people to, to, to give their opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. uh, I, I like. It depends where you want to go from here, doesn't it? I think there's, I think as a large as as a selection on their own, this feels a lot tighter and kind of tells the story, but is missing 
the end shot, basically. Um, I'm kind of tempted to take him out and just go, taking the last one out and just gone with those six. Yeah. Yeah. I said, and luckily I do have some other images that I'll look at. I mean, that gives me some work to be able to print up and see if I can extend into this and find some more that may tell the end of the night a bit better. Mm -hmm. um, and then with that, um, yeah, find find an ending for the uh, for the series. But but maybe that's how you could treat the whole project is like a series of s smaller stories. But then you've got to try and connect the whole thing together somehow. So this would be the party story, and you've got your images within that. But then that just forms part of the bigger picture. Um, and maybe like so, say you did like six, eight images from this lot. If you then combine them into like more of an exhibition, you'd pick two from this section, like yeah. the strongest two that told that bigger story. But this is then like an expanded version for a zine or like for your yes. website or whatever, you know, just of, of this part. Yeah. Yeah, I like that as well. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that we're done. <laughs> what, so what, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> Are you like, do you like that selection? I kind of went off on a bit of a tangent and we're just like, yeah, that one, that one, not that one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, they're there. I'm more than uh, would love to hear what other people think as well, and and on that selection. Yeah, definitely. So, if you're watching now or in the future, please, if you've managed to last two hours through <laughs> this stream, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> um, please leave some comments in the uh, on the YouTube. On, on the YouTube, that makes no <laughs> sense, does it? <laughs> Shows how old I am. Please yeah, see, leave yeah, some please. comments on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> on the interwebs. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be allowed to do this. <laughs> right, on that note, I think we're going to have to wrap it up because, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to quickly... Uh, go back to the grid mode and have a quick look at them all again. So I think you could eat like, it, is that the sort of process that you go through um, when you're selecting what images to print? Yeah. So these, so I haven't sent these to you because I haven't scanned them in. But um, I, uh, I made a contact sheet and I've gone through and I've sort of. Uh, drawn over all the ones that I think I want to print and then it's yeah. a, uh, and it was a process actually of in this instance I even gave the contact sheets to a couple of other people to have a look as well and see which ones they liked yeah. um, and just got them to draw as well on so I got a little what do they call it glass pen or ceramic pen thing to to draw on the print and um, and so I it was a, it, it's been a slow process going through and finding the images again and then printing those ones actually up. So I haven't yeah. finished any I haven't finished them yet. Um, but it's the further it's the project I'm furthest along with. So um, I think in that instance it's been both good because it's helped me select which images to print, but also bad because there's a lot of them, which means it hasn't really been a selection process so much as yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. But it hasn't been quite as directed. So this has been really helpful and uh, to really hone the idea of what the story is and what to what to present. Yeah, I, I, to me, that's what's kind of I, the ones you sent me. My, it's just like what's what is the story here? And I've actually gone down the route of kind of just telling the story of the party, haven't I, with those images? Yeah. Um, because that's. That, that appears to be the story the architectural ones it's like there's no there's no story to them like no. you don't even know they're taken in the same environment um so that's i think that's probably why I ended up going down that route because that's where the kind of it seemed like the, the strongest story was there that number t just now that i've got them back all up on screen that, that number two um yeah. I think it has a very strong element to it 
of what's going on here and also feeling part of it um so i think there's a there's a there's a place for it it's possibly a little bit kind of just technically there's a bit of it's a bit blurry you know it's really it's quite overexposed at the top and these things aren't necessarily problems no it's just like are they is it something that actually diminishes the image slightly to make you think yeah yeah like <laughs> now, now i've spent time with it and like you've told me the story behind it it's it's really interesting but it's like is there an image that you can take and do all that without me having to get over the hurdle of needing that story to kind of accept the image yeah Does that yeah make sense like stand up on its own yeah What's your favourite image out of them all? Just out of the pure like, this is the, this is my favourite photo out of all of these. Just from a um, so not story, just in general. J yeah, just as a, a standout image. Probably, oh, at the moment, probably twenty seven still. Just uh, from the architectural side of it, um, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. That's um, and maybe maybe twenty one. Uh, from the from the storyline, the one with the photo, the the students getting their photograph taken, but okay. I'm still leaning towards twenty seven. Just from an, I don't know, just I think it's just it's just a style that I enjoy. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know why. I like I, I can't put a full finger on it. Um, <laughs> I'm connected to it, I know the building. Um, I I know where it is, sort of. I, I have a connection to that area. I, um, I've taken several shots of this, and I think my the bit that I like about it is the fact that the sky itself is just white. I've got other, I've got lots of other images in almost identical to this, except the sky itself is grey, um, and it just doesn't really work that well. Um, yeah. I like its high con, uh, its yeah, high contrast in it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Well, hopefully one day we'll get to meet and I can actually see a print of it. <laughs> it's really frustrating, I find, compared to like when you you see a print in your hand compared to the result you get digitally from that, whether it's like a photo or a scan of it. Um, yeah. It's just such a different, it's a different experience it and it's different quality. Yeah, that's one thing I noticed scanning in the uh, prints. They they look different in a small thumbnail and as uh, I think than they do. As a print, like as a print, I can see all the flaws in a lot of them. There are spots yeah. that I think, oh no, that needs to be removed, or this and 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 like. But as a scan, they look very different, <laughs> and yeah. some of them are, they look better than I think they actually are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I was saying when I did that zine, I I printed them out at a real low quality, so I was almost detached from like the quality of the image, and it was just purely about. The story and the context of them all which really helped actually it's um it was quite beneficial to for them all to be shit because i had no expectations of going oh this this photo is better than that one technically better than that one it's like well it didn't really matter because yeah. it didn't it didn't work and then i got to the point where it's like well this one isn't a very good photo like for technical reasons and that actually detracts so i left it i left some of them out for that reason but it's like it you can't get to that point if you're constantly looking at the technicalities of, of the images. Yeah. Well, I guess if we were only to go on technical images, right, those D-Day landing images would never have made the light of day because technically they're terrible, a lot of them. But they oh, show yeah. such a beautiful they, story. They, they've got huge historic value, haven't they? <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's an that unfair would... advantage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Not that I should ever compare myself to some of those greats. <laughs> <laughs> no. like, so some of these are fantastic, particularly if you were drinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's the context of these, and like I think that really shows in some of them, which is good because it puts the viewer in that mindset. Mm. I do like the number twenty six. Sorry, I'm just constantly looking at 
through the photos as well while we're chatting. Uh, 26, I really, I like that. If that had the party goers, like, with their clothes half hanging off them, you know, like, I don't know, like carrying a bottle, you know, just dro- their bodies drooped as they're walking along <laughs> the path because they're exhausted. I think that would fit perfectly. Now, whether they do walk along those, who knows? But I think that's what what's lacking in the images that I selected were was actually they feel quite similar. Um, yeah. There's no there's no bigger picture or like alternate views, which is something that you're going for in your story, isn't it? It's like you want to express a different view. Yeah. Um, and the view I picked out is is quite a standard one, really. So I think that's probably that's that's a very bad element of, of my my thought process in that because it's it's very it's quite vanilla the choices I've made. Um, I think it's it's still useful, right? It's still something that allows me to see a completely different perspective on this on what I saw, and and I can weigh that up. I can I can see yeah. whether or not I agree overall, and and if it fits with my thought process, and uh, yeah, I. And just in general, what what other people get out of it, right? So I don't think yeah. there's a, it's not really a right or a wrong or or a, you know, I, I this has been incredibly incredibly useful for me. And you're <laughs> the only, you're the only person who has seen all of these uh, in detail and been able to critique at the moment. Like I I've not really shown them to anyone at, at, as a full full platform once they. Hey, been there are millions of people watching this as well. I'm not the only one. <laughs> Well, that's true. Every yeah. <laughs> all the millions of viewers around the world right now. <laughs> like well, th- thank, thank you for sharing them because, like, I do think it's a really brave thing to do. Um, it's kind of just put it all out there and just like, yeah, just kind of let let go of it and be open to people talking about your photos. I think it's it's a really difficult thing to do. So, thank you. That's okay. <laughs> Thanks I really for giving appreciate me the it. <laughs> it's fine yeah if you ever want to do it again it's great sorry if i kind of I do, I do have a tendency to kind of go off a bit with my train of thought so apologies if i did <laughs> it's hard, like it's it's really interesting looking at somebody else's photos and doing this because i i I've, like i got quite drawn into them and that's a good sign like, <laughs> just really en- enjoyed spending time with them, which is something that like, I very rarely do with other people's photos, you know, because they just come and go online, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So the, quickly. Exactly. So I, it's, been, t- sorry. it's been really interesting from that point of view to kind of hear the story behind the photos in, in a lot of detail and kind of, that's enabled me to get a lot more from them, I think. I th- I think that's where social media in general lacks with photography. Like, what are we we've taking more photos every day than we ever have, but everything is really fleeting. Whereas this sort of process allows you to really connect to something um, and actually understand what's going on behind it and as to why you have taken that image. And, and yeah. yeah, I think yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more of these with other photographers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no one else is going to want to do this. <laughs> just us mad people <laughs> yeah right like the, this is no kind of comment on your photography or anything it's just it's, it's the nature yeah. of social media to me if you'd posted these images on uh, it's, it's twitter isn't it that i mainly see your work on i would probably not have stopped on them like yeah, yeah it's just a, and it's not because they're not good images it's just my mindset when i'm on social media isn't overly like i'm trying to change it and engage more i fucking hate that word and, <laughs> i'm like but generally when i'm on social media it's kind of right i'm just quickly on my phone just checking in seeing what's going on and the headspace isn't there to really kind of digest stuff um so yeah it's like like i say it's it's been fantastic to actually to do to spend the time with your photographs so thank you very much for that it's, uh, and if i do see them on twitter now they'll be in my head i'll be like oh yeah like <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, 
I'll, I'll know it's uh, less of an empty like then than more. Yeah. Oh, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> this is a genuine like, not an accident. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you should mention that. As I just very quickly, um, that's one of the things that I find about yeah, the social media side of photography is that unless nowadays you're it's a super saturated sort of very or high contrast or something, it is an outstanding image. Mm -hmm. And it almost has to be, I hate to say this, but a digital image that is perfect technically and has beautiful colors in it. And that's sort the of thing. It's really hard to to get other people engaged and yeah. be starting the digi uh, starting a film pathway has made, made me actually realize that i do this for me i don't do this for the likes on social media yeah. i mean don't get me wrong i used to and i used to post things up all the time and be like why is no one liking it yeah but really this is for me and this is something that i in, i'm enjoying and and that has allowed me to change my mindset and work on something that's a bit more of a uh, yeah a bit more of a project so i feel rather than wondering where the next likes are coming from and things like that I, it's it's so much more rewarding because you're not then trying to do things to get likes it's like you're just doing it for yourself which yeah. is is the fundamental to it to it all isn't it you know if, yeah if you're enjoying it then it does not matter what anybody else thinks yeah know? it takes a while unless to you have an exhibition and no one turns up in which case you're like mm. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm looking forward to when that happens. <laughs> I'll be there. Count me in. Excellent. One, one <laughs> I'll suddenly go, oh, no, you shouldn't have chosen that one. That one, yeah. that one doesn't tell the story. Oh, it's like, why did you choose number like number five again? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's Cambridge 15, my favourite. <laughs> yeah, I need to get better titles for these as well, I think. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Just leave them as, as the file names you've got. Man. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just right we're really gonna have to wrap this up now i think <laughs> <laughs> but um that's fine i've really enjoyed it right let me just uh let's just see if i made any notes about what i'm gonna do next week right i'm gonna uh i'm gonna disconnect you now Al. thanks a lot that's okay speak to you bye. soon take care mate bye right let's uh We'll just come back to this hello right well thank you very much al for joining us on that um that was like a good two hours of of chat i hope you enjoyed that i certainly did it was great um really appreciate al coming on it's uh it's a tricky thing to do if anybody else would like to do it get in touch um we could eat, we could have like two or three people all chatting about photos you know we'll we'll share our photos and We'll go from there and, and see what we get from it. Um, next, what are we on now? Sunday. Yeah, so, so next week I think I'm going to have a I'm going to have a holiday um, from streaming. So I probably won't broadcast on Thursday and Sunday um, this week. I might do a couple of random streams as I'm working in a dark room, just because I quite like that. It's nice when. Mark pops along for an hour of the last one. It's just nice, kind of a bit of virtual company, very strange. And then they're there on YouTube, just kind of showing some process stuff in the future. Um, so that will put me back on schedule in two weeks. I'm probably going to change my schedule as well and might just go to one broadcast a week. Um, I think I might do them more evening times now. I know it might not look like it, but these things are actually quite time consuming in regards prep and stuff like that so i'm just going to reduce it down to one a week um and then aim for some more of like a stable schedule like one where i have somebody in to talk about photos one that's like a dark green connection maybe where we're all printing up <coughs> and, and work through it like that but i'm going to take a week off have a break uh obviously i'm not going anywhere we're still staying on lockdown um but just kind of give myself a little breather from this and, and think about what's going on thank you very much for joining today thanks so much to al again great to meet you um and yeah see you all don't forget to subscribe because any streams i do do will uh will pop up pop up there for either viewing live or, or watching afterwards and yeah see you all in the near future
Take care. Bye.